that. And where I think that my, part, my friend across the aisle and I could agree is that, and I, I, if I can just skip over to health care for a second, you know, we have a habit in our health care system of paying for the worst outcomes in the most expensive way because we're always cure-based. And the problem we have is because we don't get into preventative measures and because our fiscal notes don't allow us to capture money saved. That's true. Partly because of the way it's siloed. I put money in this and I save money in these three silos. I can't capture it. Everything I do then looks just like I'm ballooning the budget. Mm -hmm. and, and until we crack that nut, there's going to be no way for us to really meaningfully switch over to a way that works better. And let me give you one quick example, the spend down. We have seniors that are going into the spend down all the time because they can't afford the services they need, so they become wards of the state. If you supplement their income with smaller increments in the beginning for, the, for five to ten years, you're spending way less money and they have a better quality of life and they're staying at their house and they're not wards of the state. And then when it finally happens, that's when you can do it. But you save tons of money because when they become wards of the state, the, the tens of thousands of dollars a month to take care of these folks. But if you, off, if you supplement them with $1,000 a month to their income, to their Medicaid or Social Security, that's an example where prevention saves us a ton of money versus cure. But, but, you, but imagine me trying to sell that, that I'm going to give seniors money out of the blue. It looks like I'm just handing money out, but the, the math checks out. If you invest the money early with them, you're not doing the spend down, and they're not wards of the state later, and their quality of life is higher. Health care. Health care. Well, I will tell you that uh, I look at that. It, my concern is, is I, and I, you know, I'd like to talk about the 2% provider tax that they say mm -hmm. that we're trying to get rid of. Mm -hmm. And they call it a provider tax, and I think we correctly identified it as a sick tax. Because I was <laughs> telling you, I will tell you that I just, just, I was having back problems, right? So I uh -huh. had two shots in my back. I just got the bill. Right on the bottom, 2% is added because of the health care Yep. tax, right? Yep. So who's paying that tax? They're not paying that tax. Yep. The sick people are paying that tax. The people that go in to get services sure. pay the 2%. And I'm saying, why should the sick people pay the extra? Why isn't that spread amongst everybody to pay mm -hmm. that fee? Mm -hmm. It's a much better way to do it if you're going to add the tax, add the tax, let everybody pay it so it's a smaller share than sitting there and making the sick person oh, love, pay the tax. I'd love to grab my phone and look up that bill where you're it's advocating for a statewide tax to replace the, the provider tax. So that's what it sounds like you're well, saying. Here, well, here's the deal, though. Right. We, the, what, what is it? Is it? Tell me the care fund that it's paying for. But I will tell you that the fund, this fund. The, fa the fund that it's paying for, mm -hmm. the care that it's paying for, is being paid for by the federal government. No, it's funding that's that. Not true. We have taken. You take that fund. They have matching funds, but when in the bill you guys have looked, proposed, that's not what it looked, does. You front we had load to it recover. and then you empty it out the backside. Come side. on, man. We had to recover. That's true. I'm in the committee. I've seen it. We had to recover all of that money from every place it was stuck in all the parts of the mm -hmm, budget mm -hmm. and pull that back. Mm -hmm. It was everywhere. We're using it to fund everything. And so, you're going to bankrupt the account in four years, which is the math gimmick your party will not admit in this situation because you absolutely end that account. And when you end that account and you front load it with money so it looks like it's full, on the back end it's all coming out. Senator Abler, I think, had a proposal. Uh, he and some other colleagues had a proposal in the paper, newspaper a couple of uh, weeks ago, maybe last week, mm -hmm. about uh, changing uh, or, or using a different kind of tax rather than the provider tax, mm -hmm. uh, but taxing um, uh, insurance company transactions, I believe, as a way to replace that 2%. Mm -hmm. Has there been any discussion about that bill? Uh, I, you know, I've not seen that in our committee that much. Mm -hmm. uh, I will tell you this, though, just, and just to, I'm going to go get Senator Howell ginned up here for a second. As long <laughs> as we allow for profit motives to manage our health care education system, we're going to continue to have these finance problems. Because as long as for profit motives trump the health care of people, you're going to get what he calls, I love the six tech, that's a wonderful spin. Uh, the reality is it's a health care tax because we can't pay for health care, and it's, it is spiraling out of control. But as long as we allow insurance companies and the profit motive to be a part of the equation when making sure our health care works, we will continue to be broken. And this is a perfect example of that is we dumped, what, $170 million into the private market, uh, $120 million this last time, and they just recorded record profits this last year on the backs of Minnesota taxpayers, when, which is something you guys advocated when for. When did the start you of this? When did, the, when, when did we start to have this problem? We started it, the problem back when we, when we introduced 
the ACA. I was hoping you'd when say we that, did sir. Mincher, that is perfect. When we did Mincher, that's because when it, it all went wrong. Because it was a dream wrong. beforehand when your grandma was, was dying of preconditioned addition and she couldn't get the coverage she needed. She and had she the was coverage. Broke. There, was, there was coverage for pre preconditioned. No, there wasn't. Yes, this, there that was. is absolutely not true. And the reality is, is that as long as we continue down the path we're on, I love that this, it, this is the other thing I love about my the friends. The MCHA fund it is constantly took care sky of it. is falling. And it's short-term memory loss. The healthcare system prior to the ACA, listen, the ACA was no panacea. Was I happy with it? No. It did some really good things in some front ends. Clearly, we shouldn't be involved in building websites. I'll be the first to admit that to you, uh, demonstrated by, by the websites we have. But the reality is, is that healthcare is a right, absolutely a right of all people to have, and it is our responsibility to let people have the pursuit of happiness, and we don't do that when we take Nobody away Nobody is denied health care. If you don't have money, you can go to the insurance room and get care. Oh, oh, now, health insurance is a part. twist, Let me tell but you, you can get health care. You're right. We had universal health care. It was called the emergency rooms, which is the worst outcomes, the most expensive way that you and I picked up when no one else could pay for it, and that's what we had prior to the ACA. The worst outcomes, well, no preventative <laughs> care, which does solve well, the problem. Well, when you talk about the preventative care, well, that was supposed to be the panacea of HMOs. So, Senator, where did Senator, that happen? Senator, Senator, let, let me ask you this question, and I, um, 